Next up is Sam White. Hi, I'm Sam White with GitLab, and I'm excited to show you how GitLab can help protect your Kubernetes clusters from attacks through integrations with Cilium and Falco. Cilium provides basic firewalling capabilities, and Falco provides intrusion detection capabilities. Together, they provide defense in depth by protecting both the network and the containers from attack. For this demo, I have a GitLab instance on the screen on the left and a terminal in Kubernetes on my right. Today, I'm limiting my scope to just the open source capabilities that we have that also leverage eBPF. So this GitLab instance you see is actually running our core product with functionality that's all free and open source. To get started, the first step is to connect a Kubernetes cluster to your GitLab instance. For this demo, I have already connected an existing cluster that I set up ahead of time with a basic Nginx ingress. I've also created two projects in GitLab. The cluster management project will be used to hold the configuration for installing Cilium and Falco, and the simple web app project will be used to deploy a basic web application into Kubernetes and to configure any namespace specific policies. To install Cilium and Falco, all I need to do is come back to open the cluster I've connected and select my cluster management project as responsible for managing my Kubernetes cluster. Going back to that cluster management project, you'll notice I have a GitLab CI YAML file in the repository that's running GitLab's default managed cluster application CI job. To install Cilium and Falco, I just edit config.yaml file in the GitLab slash managed apps folder and set the installed variables for Cilium and Falco to true. Once I commit the file into my repository, GitLab will automatically run a pipeline job to do the installation, and you can see the installation happening here in GKE. Once the installation is complete, you will notice that both Cilium and Falco are now running in the GitLab managed apps namespace. By default, GitLab deploys Cilium in audit mode to allow you to observe the effects of policies before you begin enforcing them. To switch Cilium into blocking or enforcing mode, you can create a Cilium folder with the settings to put it in blocking mode in a values.yamls file. The pipeline will automatically run when you commit the edits, and once it's complete, Cilium will have been set to block traffic. As a final installation step, I'm going to run a command to restart any pods in GKE that were running before Cilium was installed so they will recognize Cilium as their network manager. Now that I have Cilium and Falco set up, let's take a look at the simple web app that I deployed to production. We can visit the website and see everything is up and running. Unfortunately, this web application has a very serious remote code execution vulnerability where the text that is entered is allowed to run directly inside the container. For example, I can append commands to list the files in my current directory. I can read the system hosts file, and I can even write to it as well. As you can see, I was able to append a new entry to the end of the file. Finally, when I try to reach a container in another namespace, you'll notice I get a 200 response code, showing that I have full network connectivity to everything else in the same cluster. Fortunately, I'm able to lock this container down through GitLab by leveraging Cilium and Falco. Cilium network policies work based on an allow list model. If at least one policy applies to a pod, then it will block all traffic that does not match their policies. To block the undesired outbound traffic to other pods, I can go to my project, add a new network policy to the auto deploy values.yaml file that will instruct Cilium to only allow traffic to this namespace if it's inbound from the Kubernetes ingress node. I'm going to do this for both my master branch and my database branch, so it will apply to the applications in both namespaces. Again, after my pipeline finishes running, we can go back to our vulnerable web application and notice request now times out when trying to connect to the other namespace. Similarly, I can set up Falco to monitor for unauthorized reads and writes to the file system. Falco rules are configured at the cluster level, so their configuration is done inside the cluster management project. I'm going to create a new Falco folder and enter my rules inside the values.yaml file. This one is going to monitor for any write activity to files inside the containers. Once I commit the file, the pipeline job will push the new rule into Kubernetes. And now when I try again to write the, to the host file, I can see the activity is being recorded in the Falco logs. It's worth noting that although I'm not covering blocking in this talk, GitLab does have the ability to block these kinds of actions and can also export the logs out to an external system. In managing Cilium and Falco through GitLab, users gain the ability to manage, store, and audit their policies in the same way they manage, store, and audit their code. This means it comes with a full audit log of any edits made, as well as the ability to revert back to a previous version of a policy at any time. Thanks for your time today. I hope this demonstration was useful to you. It makes managing your policies and rules a little bit easier.
Thanks, Sam, for this great presentation on and demonstration on how Falco and Solium together complement each other and improve security using eBPF.